Alrighty, peeps, Michael Malice said it. They want you dead, but they'll accept your submission. And today's latest breaking news of the day confirms just that the Marine veteran, Daniel Penny, uh, has been indicted on second degree manslaughter for the death of the subway patron, Neely, uh, who died after being put in a chokehold by Penny after Neely was acting erratically threatening on a New York City subway. Now, first things first, I'm at a, a, a national speech and debate competition where my kid is participating. She's made it through to the quarters. We're waiting for the results of the quarterfinals to see if she makes it to the semifinals. Uh, I've been judging as well, so uh, there will be no editing to this. It's gonna be a talky vloggy, just talking about this latest development. Daniel Penny, the Marine veteran, indicted. Now, we all know the story. We saw the video, we saw at least a portion of the video. Uh, Neely, a man with a history of violence, had assaulted three women in the last three years on New York City subways, uh, 42 arrests, violent, violent criminal, uh, at least on several occasions, uh, was having a mental health crisis on a New York City subway, threatening people, saying he hasn't eaten, he's gonna get food, he doesn't care if he goes to jail, he's prepared to die, etc., etc. The other patrons on that, on that subway were saying that they were feeling intimidated, felt threatened, congratulated or thanked Daniel Penny for subduing the man. Obviously, nobody intended for Neely to get uh, killed, hence the second-degree manslaughter charges, uh, not homicide or first-degree murder, I should say. The people on that Metro car were thankful of Daniel Penny intervening, uh, and it looked like, according to some, that he wasn't going to get charged. I said there's no question he's going to get charged because the political mob had started speaking. You got the AOCs tweeting out, this is murder. You got the Nina Turners tweeting out, this is a lynching, uh, a modern day lynching. I think it was Nina Turner or somebody else who referred to Neely's death as a modern day lynching on a metro in New York. It had been politicized right from the get go. Uh, and despite the fact that no charges came for a few days, it was clear that the powers that be, the totally pristine and uncorrupt prosecutorial system of New York State was, was going to change its mind and come after Daniel Penny because the mob had started chanting for Daniel Penny's blood. And they're going to cave into that pressure, and they did. Charges were brought by Bragg's office, the same Bragg who's going after Donald Trump, and the indictment was returned today, second degree manslaughter. It is not the case that when something happens between a white person and a black person that it's necessarily a racial issue. Race does not always play a factor in the story, but it seems that when the roles are of a certain persuasion in the media, the media immediately plays that into the story. Daniel Penny, who the media is quick to point out is a white man, put Neely, who is a black man, in a chokehold because Neely was acting erratic and violent and threatening on a metro, and it became a racial issue. It became a, a, a question of injustices committed to black people uh, by white people, and it was racialized, politicized from the get-go. Does race play any factor in this? Not but for a matter of fact that, just as a pure matter of fact, Penny is white, Neely was black. Does that mean that because it's a fact that is true of the story that it was a relevant fact for the story? No. But what the media does is they come out and make it a relevant fact of the story so they can then focus on that aspect and make it into its own self-fulfilling sort of disinformation laundering. The media makes it an issue and then claims it's an issue because the media made it an issue. Much like, oh, just recently they slapped a warning label on Trump's speech uh, after he uh, got indicted or he went to court in Miami. They slapped a warning label on his speech saying, rhetoric like this has led to violence. And then they get their other blue check mark talking head idiots on Twitter saying, oh my goodness, what Trump says is so dangerous, they had to slap a warning label on it. That is disinformation laundering. The media does something stupid, and then they get their idiot, stupid blue check mark talking heads repeating what they did stupidly as though it legitimizes the idiocy in the first place. They want you dead, but they'll accept your submission. What this story is basically telling you prosecutorial powers will cave to political pressure, and the mob knows it, that's why they do this as a pure matter of fact as well. Secondary manslaughter, Daniel Penny did something that resulted in the death of a human. Technically, at least that fits one aspect of manslaughter. The questions as that you ask yourself when you decide to prosecute, are there reasonable grounds to not prosecute? Are there other elements that play into this that we don't get into the second degree manslaughter, which is having done something that caused the death of someone without a justifiable excuse, without justification, without a, a legitimate reason? 
the media trying to you know racialize this entire story ignoring the fact that the cameraman who recorded the thing uh was latino that the other uh passenger on the metro who helped daniel penny subdue the uh victim neely was black and ignoring that they've got to racialize it because white and black and that's how the media creates racism out of thin air where there's no otherwise evidence of it uh daniel penny in an interview said race had nothing to do with this. I didn't put him in a chokehold because he was a black man. I put him in a chokehold because he was acting menacingly to everybody on that metro, metro being the Canadian term, subway. But the media will make it that, and they're gonna say, basically right now, show everybody out there, you can't defend yourself. If you pull out a gun to defend your property like the McCloskeys did, you're gonna get prosecuted. If you, if you use a firearm to defend yourself, like Rittenhouse, you're gonna get prosecuted, and even if you get acquitted years down the line after you've been destroyed, bankrupted, harassed by the judicial system, well, good for you, to the victor go the spoils. They're teaching everybody the lesson out there. What Binger basically said, you know, everybody's gotta take a beating. Take your beating, because if you defend yourself from the beating, the, the process itself is going to be worse than the beating that you might have otherwise taken. That is, of course, unless you get killed, as happens oftentimes, or not oftentimes, as happens occasionally when people have mental health crises on subway cars. They want you dead, but they'll take your submission, and now people out there are gonna think twice about being a good Samaritan like Daniel Penny tried to be ostensibly. Everyone on that car, does not think that Daniel Penny set out to kill Neely. Everyone on that Metro car was saying that they were felt intimidated, threatened, and that it was justified and they were thankful that he did it. The media racialized it. The media came out with their talking heads, their goons, their social media mob to put pressure on a prosecutorial system that is now gonna go after Daniel Penny to the fullest extent of the law. He can face 15 years in jail if convicted. We'll see what happens at trial. It might just come to the point where even though an indictment was returned. The old expression is you can indict a ham sandwich, especially in New York State. Will he get a fair trial? Uh, will, will, will people in New York say, we are being left to our own devices. Police are not in the metro system. Mental health crises galore. And now we're gonna be prosecuted if we defend ourselves against threats from people who are having mental health crises on the streets? We'll see where it goes. It's the news of the day. Uh, his give, send, go, Daniel Penny, it's up to the nearly $3 million now. Uh, great to raise money so that you can fund your defense from questionable prosecution. I said it was going to happen. There's too much political pressure for this not to happen. Too much of the mob was shrieking that this has to happen. We'll see if there's going to be justice at the end of the day. Remember, this is similar to the Kyle Rittenhouse case. The, despite all the video evidence, despite all the testimonial evidence, the evidence that was there, that it was a clear-cut case of self-defense that ought never have been prosecuted in the first place, uh, they still prosecuted. He got acquitted. We'll see what happens to Daniel Penny. It's the news of the day. Now, I'm gonna go see if my uh, kid has uh, gotten news on the quarterfinals to see if she moves on to the semifinals. Uh, and then we'll see. Maybe one day I will put her speech on the interwebs for the aggregate knowledge of the internet to dissect and judge. Thank you all. You know what to do. Uh, like, share, subscribe, snip, clip. VivaFry.com for merch. VivaBarnesLaw.Locals.com We're going to talk about this, obviously, this Sunday night for the stream. I'm still going to be down here, but we're still doing a stream. Sunday night with Barnes, 6 o'clock Eastern Standard. Peace out, peeps. Booyah.